Hey everyone, uh, here is a much requested and long overdue video on book recommendations. And I don't have a lot of book recommendations because while I have been reading a lot of books, I'm always reading at least one, many of them <clears throat> are, other, are either, <sighs> what's the word I'm looking for, part of a series that I've already recommended. So unless you're already reading that series, I don't recommend you jumping in and reading the book that I'm reading possibly does not know what he wants to do with himself. Or uh, they just weren't that good. I mean, they're okay, but nothing worth recommending. And I know I need to do a Goodreads account. I have one. I never update what I'm doing. So maybe that would be a good way to keep you uh, uh, posted on what I'm reading. When I do decide to actually follow through and do that, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, here's just a random collection of stuff that I do recommend. So, first things first, uh, my newest favorite, I'm not even done with it, I'm like, I have that much left. This is called Some Girls Bite, and it's by Chloe Neal, and it is a, a Chicagoland vampires novel. So it is part of a series, this is the first one in the series, and I'm actually going to go to the library as soon as I'm done filming this and see if they have the next one. And, um, it's, it's interesting. It's a little different take on the whole vampire thing, and it's recommended by couple of authors that I already read and, and enjoy so when I saw this at the library I grabbed it and um, it's based in Chicago which I kind of like because that's where I'm from originally and it doesn't say here anything about the subsequent volumes but I know there are at least two more okay and then um, this is a sequel to a book that I've raved about so much that it got its own video. If you read the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon, then you um, are aware of the Outlander saga epic series that she wrote. This is, uh, there is a character in that series called Lord John Gray, and uh, he's sort of a part of the supporting cast. He got his own spin-off, if you will, of mystery type novels. and. Um, this is a one of the Lord John Gray series, but what I really like about this book, here it is from the library, it's called The Scottish Prisoner. What's great about this one is this is the first one of the Lord John Gray novels that actually has one of the main characters from Outlander in it, Jamie Fraser. He features very, very heavily in this book. So if you are missing Jamie and Claire and, uh, and, and cannot wait until the next real book in the Outlander series comes out, you get a little taste of Jamie. And this takes place when he is uh, done with the Rising. It's after the Scottish Rising of 1748, and he is um, a, a prisoner on parole in a, in a, on an estate in, in the Lake District in England. So, love it. It's at your local library and other places, I am sure. Um, oh, and also there's preview of the next book, of the Outlander, the next Outlander book. Preview at the end. Woohoo! Um, another part of my series, see, I feel bad to keep recommending these, but if you are not aware of Janet Ivanovich, um, if you want laugh out loud nonsense, I mean literally laugh out loud mystery novel type thing, um, this series started with obviously number one, we're on to number 18, is hysterical. And, um, that's Stephanie Plum is the main character, she's a bounty hunter in New Jersey, and it's, it's like, Jersey girl, Jer it's like, uh, Jersey Shore meets Real Housewives of New Jersey meets just absolute hilarity, and um, this is a good one. So this is the latest one. Now, if you want a little nonfiction and you're interested in uh, anything historical, I got this the last time I was in London. I don't know if you can actually even get it in the States. Maybe now you can. I know you can get it on Kindle, but at the time you could only get it in England and um, I picked it up at the bookstore in the airport. This is my brother-in-law who travels uh, a lot for business actually was the one who recommended it to me and it's by an author named John O'Farrell who I believe writes a lot of sort of um, commentary type essay things and uh, this is called An Utterly Impartial History of Britain also known as 2000 Years of Upper Class Idiots in Charge. It is not a small book but it is hysterical, and um, I'm trying to think. My, my son actually is now reading it. He dog-eared that page. Shame on him. But um, there's just, um, I'm trying to find a really, oh, here, the Bronze Age is called, this section is called the Bronze Age, when the clever kids did metalwork. Some of these 
Um, here's the first chapter, and it's just humorous. There are, it, there's, there are facts. You will learn about the history of England, but it's not dry. I, I wish all my history classes had been taught like this. So the first chapter is called Ancient and Roman Britain, and the subtitle is How the Romans Established Our Template for Civilization by Killing Anyone Who Didn't Like It. Um, and chapter two, The Dark Ages, how wave after wave of immigration made and continues to make Britain the rich, fascinating, and occasionally suspicious country it is today. And this is my favorite. The Normans, 1066 to 1216, how the British class system became established and entrenched by some snobby French nobles whose, descend whose descendants still have second homes in France today. So, and it go <laughs> goes on and on, and um, it's just, it's really funny and uh, irreverent and uh, I believe since then he has written a second book uh, that covers the latter half of the 20th century in England so there you go and uh, lastly also talked about this earlier favorite book I will tell you after the break hang on let's try this again so my, I read this for the first time in 2010 and thought it was the best book I had written of that written not written. I didn't write it. Wish I could. Didn't. Best book I had read in 2010. Then my book club had this for our November selection and still, so I, I the first time I read it, I got it at the library. Second time, I bought the hardcover and I loved it so much, I also bought the Kindle version so I could take it with me when I went away for Thanksgiving. And it is A Discovery of Witches. And I want to show, I don't have the hardcover with me because I give it to my friend Katie. But the reason I'm showing you on the Kindle is this is not my Kindle. I got my husband for Hanukkah, early Hanukkah present, so he can bring it with him on our trip, is a Kindle Fire. He travels a lot for business, not a big reader, reads a lot for his job, but uh, doesn't like to read so much for fun unless the word golf is somewhere in the literature. Uh, but he wants to be able to watch movies and um, uh, maybe do a little internet access. Um, and read books and magazines if he wants to. And so the I his he has a laptop, but it's all passworded and firewalled for work, so he really can't use it for personal stuff. And after doing a little research, I came up with the most economical choice and easiest for him to travel with is the Kindle Fire. So this is it in a case. It's about the same size, a little bit bigger than the real Kindle, the original. This is a real one too, but and there it is. Oh look at there I am. Okay, there, here it is in the uh, case, and um, and there it is. So you just, it's a touch screen. It's a lot like an iPad, I have to say. And here is a Discovery of Witches. See, there's the cover. And if you look at it on my bookshelf, there it is. Looks like that. That's what the real cover looks like as well. There's some other. I see that he's downloaded a few things. Seriously, look at this. PGA website, golf magazine, golf digest, and a dictionary. I think the dictionary just comes with it. I highly doubt that he chose to. Um, oh, and yes, I see he downloaded a sample of an actual fiction book. Yay! Okay, anyway, so um, he's not a tech guy. He's not into gadgets at all. Since I gave this to him a couple days ago, he gets up at four o'clock in the morning and he's playing with this in bed. So I'm very happy it's getting use. And um, it's right under $200. So it's not the most inexpensive gift, but it is certainly less than an iPad. So um, I still love my hard, my actual paper books, but for travel purposes, um, you can't beat a Kindle. They're very um, user friendly and now many 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 libraries and even my kids school system has books that you can download from their library for free onto a Kindle so yay anyway those are some of my recent book recommendations as always for my book recommendation videos please tell me what you're reading what you recommend because I have um, gotten a lot of good books from you guys so keep the recommendations coming thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video